From a very general point, point of view, actually the system, you can see the system is a two-tier system. Uh, tier one actually is a central bank, which is called the People's Bank of China, PBOC. So PBOC actually centrally, centrally manage the, uh, the, the, the whole system. The system actually uh, uh, issues the currency uh, uh, doing all the daily operations. Uh, but PBOC does not face the end user directly. So, so PBOC will only issue the, 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 the digital currency to the commercial banks. Then the commercial banks will issue the digital currency to the end users through a digital wallet. So, so that, that's why it's called a, a two-tier system. So PBOC will face the commercial banks uh, only. Then the commercial banks will face the end users through a digital wallet. But the system is centrally managed. Do you hope uh, that this will set a standard um, for global digital currencies going forward? I uh, personally, I hope so. But I think the question is uh, is uh, is uh, is actually uh, we have to answer a few questions when we uh, when we are talking about the global standard because every market is different. Every uh, the, the 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 law is different. The technology is different. The market situation is different. Actually, for every country, I think you, I think. Uh, there are three basic questions you have to answer when when when, we, when, when you are going to the uh, digital currency. First is that is this currency going to be a legal currency or it's a commercial entity based currency? That means it's something like uh, Libra. This this is this is number one. Number two is that uh, uh, is it is this uh, digital currency uh, positioned to uh, replace the retail market or the wholesale wholesale market? That's number two. Number three is that uh, is it going to be DLT based? It's not a must. I think I think for each country, for every country, these three questions are different. I think the answer is different, and also the solution will be different. What about commercial yeah. interests in China? How have they reacted to this? Uh, from the bank's point of view, I think that we can uh, we can take advantage of this uh, this opportunity to to. Uh, to uh, 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 to get get into the retail payment sector, uh, um, the the second is uh, from the uh, from the, uh, the 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 digital payment uh, point of view. For example, Alipay or uh, WeChat Pay, I think the digital currency may have some effect on them because uh, because I think in the future. Uh, Alipay, WeChat Pay, or Union Pay, and also the digital wallets will be will, will be standard, uh, standard side by side and uh, complete with, with, with each other. So essentially, if you boil it all down, what is the one big advantage of a digital currency over what the current real, real currency in, in China? First is that if you compare the digital currency to the, uh, uh, to the paper currency, there are a lot of advantages. It's faster, it's cheaper, and it's uh, transparent, and it's uh, it's uh, more fit to the digital digital e ecosystem. But if you compare this uh, uh, digital currency to the current digital payment ecosystem, it's slightly more complex, because uh, because uh, the 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 so-called the, the digital payment actually they are account based. That means that means their money actually is not M zero, it's M one and M two. M1 and M2 actually is not backed, are not backed by the government. It's not legal currency. It's, it's backed by the commercial entities. But the commercial entities uh, 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 are not as uh, so good as, uh, as a central bank. So, so if we, if we compare, com compare the, the, the uh, digital currency to M1 and M2, it's slightly more complex. But we're not, we're not going to uh, uh, replace uh, uh, the digital world, digital payment like Alipay or WeChat Pay with uh, digital currency and because we uh, it's already world class and it's okay. working quite well. Okay. And uh, we have to protect the, our investment. Mm. And, uh, and, and lastly, I mean, how does this benefit shoppers? How does this benefit the ordinary man and woman on the street? What do they get out of this? I think the one of the key advantage of digital currency is that you can you can you can make a payment even if there is no internet. As that means you can you can directly uh, make payment from one phone to another phone. Uh, uh, that's one. Uh, that, another one is uh, second is uh, even if you do do not have a deposit account, you can still open a digital wallet as as long as you have a phone or you have your 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 ID card. I think I think from the inclusive finance point of view. Uh, digital currency has a lot of ad advantages, but, but going forward, because it will be market-driven, so which one will be better, we don't know.
Joe Yong, Assistant General Manager at Chinwang Bank in Chengdu in Sichuan Province. Thanks for joining us here on the agenda. Well, thanks.